So one of the major problems the industry faces is really large-scale larval mortality events. In some really bad summers, hatcheries can barely produce any larvae, which really hurts their bottom line and then it has trickle-down effects throughout the entire industry. Because if there's no larvae, there's then no seed oysters to plant out, which really means there's far fewer oysters to harvest down the line. These large-scale larval mortality events can be caused by a lot of different things, I, or very often the bacterial pathogen Vibrio coroliticus is implicated in these large-scale larval mortality events. And one of the things that we're looking at is trying to figure out why sometimes there's a complete crash in larval culture, and other times we can detect this pathogen in really high concentrations, but the larvae are completely fine. And one of the main theories behind this is that it has to do with the microbiome of that larval culture. Um, so we're assuming that there's beneficial bacteria that are present that are keeping this bacterial pathogen from killing the larvae, but when those beneficial bacteria are absent or the pathogen is able to outrepeat them, you then see those really large-scale larval mortality events that have trickle-down effects and really damage the entire industry. So what we're trying to do is we've screened hundreds and hundreds of different bacterial isolates, all of which we found from within oysters or within the larval culture water. So we're trying to identify bacteria that are present in healthy oysters, but are either absent or not present in high enough concentrations in diseased oysters. Then we grow those beneficial bacteria up in the lab, add them back to the larval culture water, and then add high concentrations of the pathogen and see if we're able to keep the larvae alive in the presence of that lethal concentration of pathogen.